guess what? Everybody wanted a Q&A with you. They want to know lots of things about you. <laughs> that was my phone. I saw that, your foot checking. Okay. Still? Hello. Comment. It's the longest foot check ever. The video of the foot check. Let's see what everybody wants to know about you. Don't switch sides. Try to set these guys up. Doesn't work. Okay, should we do a tally of how many foot checks in this video? Do you like that? Makes no difference. Okay, good to know. Hello. Hello. Do we even have your attention? Hey everybody, welcome to the Q&A with Comet, my camel, oh, hi, let me camel out my car. Oh, he's so handsome. You guys asked a lot of stuff about him, so we're gonna try to answer those as quickly as possible. Um, for those of you that don't know, Comet is a yellow dominant Camelot macaw. So a Camelot macaw is a hybrid macaw between a scarlet and a blue and gold. Then you get a Catalina, then you take that hybrid of a Catalina and you breed it again with a Scarlet Macaw and that's what makes a Camelot Macaw. Now a Camelot Macaw comes in three different color variations and one of them is yellow dominant like Comet so he's mostly yellow on his back and then his front is pretty orange and his wing tips are blue with lots of speckles of green. So his tail can get pretty teal, sorry bud, with um, striking like yellow down the middle. His longest tail feather is always very yellow. Um, but we get some really pretty teal colors in his tail. Do you wanna go back? I don't have to show you off. Um, so his colors are very, very striking. Oh, no, you wanna be here. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Oh. Um, so just so you guys know what kind of macaw he is, because that's usually what I get asked the most about him. And if you stay tuned, you will see my Q&A with his brother Tusa, who is a blue-green dominant Camelot macaw. And you'll see that he is mostly blue-green instead of the yellow. But from the front, they usually look really similar. And his head is mostly yellow and green. Um, so like the top of his head looks different, but from the front, they look pretty similar. But from the back, you can really tell them apart. I'll move you guys over so you can see what he's up to. So now you can really see his colors, which I will show you more of. Um, hey. So let's get on to your questions. Um, one of your questions was, what is his cutest trick? I think that's up to what you guys think is the cutest of tricks, but for me, it's his rollover. I think it's adorable. I have lots of videos featuring it. It's definitely my favorite. Good boy. Oh, yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Last one. Last one. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. His favorite treat, pretty much anything. He will accept any type of nut, any type of seed, um, but he definitely prefers the nuts. And the bigger the treat, <laughs> and the more abundance of the treat, the better. Does he have a favorite person? Um, he definitely prefers and tolerates me most out of the entire family. Favorite toy. Oh, what did you destroy today? You just recently destroyed one. Um, it's from one of our toy boxes, but he likes anything that has stuff he can just take apart on it. So, and he can pretty much take anything apart. Turns out Thomas' favorite toy is this coconut. 
to any of the filling. And that's the beauty of filling currently. Definitely a favorite. his best flight trip. So I would say for me personally, it was when we took him to Salt Lake City, Utah to Point of the Mountain and it's a hang gliding spot. So the wind is always perfect coming up the mountain and they just kind of get to ride it like a wave and Comet probably flew the best out of all the birds that day and just surprised everybody. It was really cool to see him just surfing the wind literally. Who is his favorite bird in my flock? Definitely his brother Tusa is his um, best buddy, uh, but Jinx likes Comet way more than Comet likes Jinx. <laughs> but Comet's favorite is definitely his brother Tusa. When and where did you get him? So we got him and his brother Tusa from an aviary in uh, Florida called Mirror Lake Exotics. And it was a really amazing place. It's no longer in business anymore. The guy retired, um, but the person who ran it named Peter, he actually had it completely free flighted. So all the birds were free to breed with who, whomever they wanted to breed with. And they chose their own mates and they had babies on their own and they were all free flighted on this property. So it was a really, really cool way. Normally when you hear about hybrids, they're almost forced to breed. So um, humans kind of pair them up based on what color variations they want. But this place was really amazing because it was just allowing the birds to choose their mates and and I guess a Catalina chose a Scarlet or the other way around but they liked each other made you uh, okay were him and Tusa the only two in their brood or did they have other siblings besides each other so this is the hardest thing and this is kind of why I think I had a certain emotional connection to Morgan is there is actually three in their clutch. So it was Comet, Tusa, and a Red Dominant. So literally all three uh, color variations of Camelots were in this clutch and the, the Peter had sent us a picture of all three. And at the time we were getting three macaws but we had already gotten Jinx, a blue third macaw. So we didn't want to get all three, we decided to just get two and it still kills me to this day to wonder what happened to that third one where did it go you know was it a male or a female and so i think that's why morgan felt like she fit in so well because she was the third piece to that sort of thing anyway it's kind of crazy do the sun conyers ever mistake him for a giant one of their own <laughs> Um, they don't treat him super nice, if that's what you mean. So uh, I'm gonna say no. If anything, out of all the macaws, they probably pick on Comet the most. So yeah, not cool, man, not cool. When did he start his cute foot staring habit? Oh man. Hey, hey, th 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 th. too close to the wall, sir. That is also wood. All of our pictures are made of wood. They're printed on wood, so. He's like, hey, this is familiar texture. Um, his foot staring habit, man, I think, gosh, I don't know of a timeline of when he actually started or when I noticed. Uh, that's a good question. I'm not really sure. I feel like it's something where he's always been easily distracted. Uh, we just didn't always know that it was a foot thing. Let's see if we can get him in the frame a little bit more. Uh, yeah, but he's always been pretty Easily distracted. Yeah. What kind of interaction do you allow Capri to have with your bigger birds? Which one of the big birds is her favorite? Uh, she actually holds Jinx uh, and interacts with him quite a bit. Tusa, she only gives treats to, um, and the same with Comet, she'll give them treats. But I would say that Comet's probably the worst with, uh, <laughs> <laughs> with staying focused like me uh, Comet's probably the worst with her. He's the moodiest. He is the most we've always referred to him as the most Scarlet-esque where he has that nippy kind of Mentality he will pinch you um, 
And so I don't think she's quite ready for his body language and uh, it's a little bit more advanced for her. So I think in kind of the lineup of learning macaw body language, Jinx is the easiest, then it's Tusa, and then it's Comet. So uh, we'll, it'll be interesting to see when she advances to Comet. It'll probably still be a while. But I guess as far as answering what do I allow, I try to keep everything really positive. You know, I don't want her to be scared of birds, but I also want her to have a healthy respect for them, which she does. Um, so I don't want it to be a bad I don't want her to have bad interactions with him and not like him or think that he's a bad bird by any means. So I try to limit it so that they don't have negative interactions. Cause right now that is what it would be. It would be her getting scared, but she can walk around any sort of travel carrier, travel cage, trailer. Um, anytime they're in an enclosure and aviary, she can easily give a treat and not worry about getting bit. She knows how to read the body language in that essence. But if they were out, she wouldn't quite know. And the dynamic really changes based on who's out. Look at that tail. Like, don't, don't touch my tail. How are hybrids different from regular macaws via their temper, personality, health issues, etc.? cetera? Um, I would say that instead of being classified as, you know, blue and golds are usually characteristically easygoing is kind of how people put it, and scarlets are more nippy and moody. And I would say you definitely get a combination of the two with a hybrid. So I find them easier to interact with, but that also is, is a hard claim because it really depends. I've met some insanely friendly scarlets and I've met some very aggressive blue and gold. So it really depends on what they've been through with their, their humans and all that jazz. So as far as health issues, we definitely see some health issues, but we haven't been able to really confirm any of them. Comet, for instance, when he goes through a molt, they sometimes, every once in a while, a feather comes in kind of twisted and it'll just be bloody and fall out on its own. It's really funky. It's happened a couple times, maybe three times now during a molt. Um, and we have never seen that in any other type of bird. So, <clears throat> I feel like there's definitely some health issues there, but they haven't been studied quite enough. Hello, Seth. Can I hold you? I'm getting discontent. Discontent. No, I know, I know. Ugh. How handsome you are. I'm just so good looking. Okay, what else do they want to know? So one of the other questions is, um, was Comet always more interested in walking rather than flying? The thing that happened with Comet is when he was really little during the fledging age, not even little, just young, he used to go up against an aviary, push his tail feathers through, and then put all of his weight down almost like he was sitting on his tail. And what happened was you broke half your tail. So he broke half of his tail off, which made it really hard for him to fly. And it was during the fledging age. So it was a time where he was supposed to be flying. Um, and then he somehow managed to do it all again. You did it again and he broke it even worse. So he kept doing it. And this was in a six foot diameter aviary, I believe. So he had space, but he just chose to really damage his tail. And baby birds are not the smartest with their, their feathers. They kind of like don't take care of them well. They, make, they look pretty raggedy, um, but Comet was real bad. And so during that early stage of teaching them to fly, he wouldn't want to go as far because it took so much more effort because his tail was all messed up. And he would literally just fall out of the sky as far as he would tuck his wings and just drop to land on me. So instead of doing a normal landing, he would just um, like tuck and drop and cling on to like my hoodie or the back of my sweater or something. It was crazy. And we used to laugh about it, but he just was, having a hard time from early on. And so he used to land first and then he would tuck into my arm and cuddle up and then the other birds would land. And I feel like we just gave him a free pass from the beginning um, of not really showing as much interest as the other guys. So as far as the walking's concerned, it kind of started with just more of like a lack of flying, like just a lack of participation. Um, there's so many flight trips where we remember he would quit early or he would just stay and choose not to fly, just stuff like that. 
and then it's really around the house and if he's just hanging out with you that the walking comes out. If all the other birds are flying, he doesn't necessarily want to walk, he just wants to sit on you and just not go anywhere. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's... <sighs> You know, we've had so many vet checks because I'm like, why? How is that normal for him to not want to fly as much? Is if it's if it's a personality thing, that's totally okay. But I just wanted to make uber sure that it's not a medical based thing. And we've had him checked out so many times, and he always <laughs> checks out so well. Um, but even this last year, I'm like, are, are we sure that it's not something else? I would just hate to be wrong about it. So. I've had multiple different vets say it's all good, but, and sometimes he whips it out and he's amazing and he does amazing flights, but for the most part, it's not really of interest to him, which just kind of floors me. It's mind boggling. But then I think of people's different personalities and it makes more sense. But yeah, I think I'll probably always be looking for a reason why how do you make him stay at one place? My bird follows me everywhere. I mean, I really can't go to the bathroom alone. <laughs> um, Comet, so since he's naturally lazy, um, he's really not hard to get to stay in one place. If I put him on a stand or whatever, he's pretty content to just stay there. In fact, he's looking at this one. Do you want to be at that one? Where do you want to be? I want you to still be in the video. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe if I put him directly on the floor, he he would follow me. But other than that, he's he's the laziest naturally, so he's not a bird that we have to worry about on the stand. Bondi, my cockatoo, however, she's hard to keep on a stand. <laughs> Did I interrupt your <laughs> foot check? Um, okay, let's see what else we got. <clears throat> Everyone wants to know... <laughs> no, I wasn't going to pick you up. Everyone wants to know why you always check to make sure your feet are still there. Ah. Why do you do that? Comment, they wanna know why ah. you do that. Why do you always check your feet? <laughs> I don't know guys. Ah. I have met other birds and people have tagged me in foot checks of their birds doing it. I just think ah. he does it a lot. Um, and if he's in his aviary, I don't see him doing it. He obviously has stuff to do. You got nothing to do on this chair, right? You're just like, pick me up. Uh, but if he, <laughs> I guess if there's nothing better to do, might as well just quadruple check your feet are still there. 